I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> no, I'm just um, curious about your grandfather, Ivar Renning, Ivar Renningen. What do you know about his life in Norway before he went to America? Didn't know anything. He didn't ever tell you anything? Not a thing. No. We didn't know he had relatives. We didn't know where he came from. And we were little and we didn't, there was no interest. No? Not until our kids started coming, then you get curious where you came from. <laughs> yes. And did you ever ask him about it? No. No. It, it, we lived in a... We lived very, there was not that many people around you, and mm. our family lived in a close little spot yes. all together, mm. and that was our world, right, yes. until high school when we started going out to different towns and bigger places, and then, then you got, and then when I got married and met Vic's family, and they talked about their background so then it got me curious where we came from yes but it was already too late yes because do, oh, do you know how we got here where he landed and did it stay something in between it, no all I know is that he immigrated to the Dakotas in the States and then came to Canada after and do you know anything about his life in Dakotas no no when did he come to Alberta? I'm not sure now. Uh, 1906, I think. Yes. Did he come here alone? No, there, I'm not sure of that because one granddaughter says she figured... I have a picture of I, Grandpa and another man who was a neighbor and she said that they came together and okay. his name was Skunberg. Skunberg. What was his first name? Oh, what was his first name? I can't remember. That's okay. But uh, whether that's true or not, there's no way of proving it. No. Um, I suppose that your uncles, and aunts and father have been talking about their early life on the homestead? No. They didn't talk about it either? No. Okay. No. The only time I would hear anything is if they were sitting and visiting and having a little drink and then they would start talking about old times but very little about their life as kids okay do you have uh, any memories and histories that told that you remember like your from your father young age young first days they uh, your father told me that they they spoke norwegian until they started in school see now i didn't know that <laughs> I would assume because Swede and Norwegian can't be that different. That's no, very similar. So I would think Grandma could speak Swedish and Grandpa Norwegian, and so maybe they had a mixed language. I don't know. Yes. See, uh, Dad would have been the second oldest. No, Fred would have been the oldest, and then uh, Dad, and then Agnes. Hmm. So. Those would be the ones that spoke the language after that. I'm not sure that they would have they would have started school. It would, it would be English in school. Yes, yes. Uh, by the way, uh, one of the uncles died very early, the one in the back seat of the car. Yeah, he died. We were told of an appendicitis okay. rupture. Yeah. And being... 18 miles from the nearest doctor, he probably died before they got there. Yes, and he was how old? 23 or 25, I'm not sure either. Yes, like I said, you, you had two pictures of him, one in the back seat yeah. and one in the... Yeah, I hunted picture. and hunted. I even asked my Auntie Myrtle if they had a picture of him, uh -huh. and she doesn't think... I found a picture of him in a very distant, in one of, in my magazine book, He's in a group of a picnic mm -hmm. at a school, that school by yes. the home. Mm -hmm. And our neighbor pointed him out and said that was Fred. Okay. Mm -hmm. But 
And that was the only picture I had of him. So. When did you the first time hear about my grandfather Lauritz or Louis being here? When you came. <laughs> there was I had no idea there was any such person living in Canada. I thought Grandpa was the only one. Yeah. I came here in hitchhiking in nineteen eighty three. Um, now you're your father remembered my grand grandfather and uh, told me that he uh, he gave him chewing gum, and he also showed me the piece of land my grandfather was yeah working, and it was some uh, I think some slight hillside kind of northwest of your grandfather's farm, and he was supposed to have been living with his grandfather. Uh, what are your your first memories of your grandparents, Ivan and Ida? Oh, they start very early because if mom and dad had to go to town, they would take Auntie Myrtle and Uncle Art, which lived right close by. You've seen where they lived. And when we, we they drop us off at grandpa's and grandma's. Hmm. And there was four girls. My my cousin Vivian was the oldest. I was next. Her sister was next, and then my sister was next. And they say boys are mischievous. <laughs> girls are mischievous too. <laughs> what does that mean? Get into trouble. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh yeah. And what kind of trouble did you get into? Oh. <laughs> The junkyard, they would have stuff that was no good anymore. They'd pile up in a pe pile for yeah, junk. Yeah. Well, we spread it out and made things. And oh, yeah. and uh, we terrorized our uncles. They were in their 20s and yeah. such. And we would go to the bunkhouse and put big pieces of scrap iron and stuff in their bed. Or if they went to the outhouse, we'd lock the door. Yeah. <laughs> because you're... Your youngest uncles weren't really that much older than you. No, they weren't, because Vivian would have been fairly close to their age. Yeah? Yeah. So, well, Lloyd would have been the youngest, but he wasn't around home that much. Elmer, Harry, and Floyd, mostly Elmer got the brunt of everything. <laughs> and oh, yeah. during the war, we would... We would write things like uh, Hitler, Mussolini, and all the things you heard on the news, and put them in their beds, oh. and and then groceries and such were very limited. And we'd go collect eggs out of the chicken coop and make mud pie with them. Oh, and Grandma would get very upset. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah, and. Um, Things like that. We weren't allowed in her garden. Hmm. And just, but they were very patient grandparents. Yes. Grandma would discipline us more. Grandpa never said anything. <laughs> no? Um, could you, he never said anything. Could you kind of describe his personality? Very, my mother said when she first met him, he was more stiff and uh, not as tolerant, oh. but with us grandkids, we could do just about anything with him and he never said a word. And it, no, it didn't say much to you either. No, we didn't ask. We didn't realize that there was such a thing as him having parents and stuff. No. I don't know why. No, I think my, my grandfather said that when Ivor got letters from Norway, he just put them in his pocket, and he never saw him open them. No, I don't remember ever hearing. We did not know he had relatives in Canada, or in Norway, that existed yeah. until Asbjorn came along. Yes, and when did he come along first time? He was on those ships, yeah. and the ship was parked in Vancouver. Oh. And he had heard of, well, he, his grandpa's mother and all them had talked about it, I guess. Hmm. And when he was that close, he got a hold of grandpa and said that he was going to come out and see him, hmm. that he was a relative. 
and then the ship had to go too soon, wow. so he never got to him. Okay. But then Asburn and his wife came, oh, years later. Wow. And they did meet him. At what year would this be? Oh, gee. In the 80s, I think, maybe. It must have been, you know, I was here in 1983, and then Asbjorn was settled here. Well, maybe it was 70s then. Yeah. But uh, that was the only time that any of us realized. I don't even know if the sons and daughters knew there was a relative. I don't, sons and you, you, except for dad, and ne dad never ever talked about his Norwegian background or anything. No. Um, uh, just a moment, I'm going to close the door. It's <laughs> <laughs> good that I'm on from there. i got to get myself more comfortable. Comfortable. And then the audience can see the interviewer. Here I am. <laughs> Then I'll, then I'll continue. Uh, how did uh, no, your how did your father get all that land? No, your grandfather. He homesteaded for the one quarter, and I assume he just bought the others oh, yeah. as he could afford it. But it, he had to be doing quite well then, in order to have so many kids and getting so much land. They he never went anywhere. He did not go into this town. They grandma shipped cream for extra money. They had cattle, they had pigs, they had horses, they had grain. And as the boys got bigger, they had automatic hired men, so. Yes, they work for, yeah. for, for the food. Yeah, kind of. yeah. yeah. Uh, your earliest memories of the farming how was the farming at the time? No, like uh, how they worked the fields and... The first I uh, re really realize is they were still using stukers, making stooks. What is that? Clumps of uh, grain. They would make cut the grain and then gather it and this thing would tie it in a bundle. Oh yeah. yeah. And tie it with a string. Cool bundle, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was the first I ever... And then that thrashing machine we talked about yeah. would come to the farm after all the stooking, we called it, was yeah. done. And then they would thrash the... But did, did, they, did you have a machine that put the grain automatically in stooks or...? Yeah, they had a... it's a binder they called yes, it. You had a binder. It went along and it had a wheel that would bring the wheat in and it would cut it yeah. and then lay it in a... A little clump and tie it, yeah, and then dump it off. Cell binder, self binder, we yeah, yeah, call it Norway, yeah. And uh, and then you had the men or women or whoever would go out and stand them up, yeah, in maybe four or five of them so that the weather wouldn't rot them. Hmm. And then when the grain was ready, they or when the thrashing crew was ready to come. The neighbors all come with their horses and wagons and loaded the stooks on and uh, then they would put it through the machine. Yeah, um, I guess your grandfather owned about 800 acres of land altogether. You have one, one section and then 280 acres yeah. acreages. Mm -hmm. So that would be like eight, uh, three and a half thousand Norwegian decoy or more. Did, did, he, <coughs> did he have grain on all this land? No, there was two pieces of 80 acres were more, uh, <coughs> oh, I'm going to get a tickle, um, grass. Oh yeah, but the remaining was section green. was grain and it was all yeah. broken. All broken. In his time. Yeah. Uh, what are your memories about the threshing? Was it, was, isn't that the big event for a lot of people? Not to us, we were too young. Oh yeah. I have a picture of Myrtle. Uh, taking lunch to the men in the field, but yeah. that, to me it was not a big event. I was not a farm girl. <laughs> oh, no. but your father was. I his, know, uh, but I never. We were. We were never made to do anything. Okay. On the farm. Uh, I saw your map in the book, and it 
seemed like your father's land was outside Ivar's land. Yeah, it joined into Auntie Myrtle's. Yes. Auntie Myrtle and her husband bought a quarter when they got married from Ivor. Ivor actually yeah. owned that piece. Yeah. And then Dad bought a homestead quarter south of that, and it joined to Myrtle's. But from Ivor? Ivor's, it came, the corners met, like Dad's would have been here, and then Ivor's would have been like that. Okay, so your father bought land from somebody else? Yeah. It okay. was, it it like was a, a uh, some other family lived there, yes. homesteaded it, yeah. and he bought it. Yes, uh, you were talking about um, the harvest. But what did they do in the f in the spring for working the land? They all when had they great small. big old those uh, tractors with the great big steel wheel wheels, and yeah. they pulled a grain a disc or whatever it was called, yeah. and broke the land. A disc was. Was that several discs in a row? Yeah, yeah, and it turned the dirt over. A little bit, yeah. yeah. But you didn't like, use plows? No, when Dad bought his land, it was all broke. Yes. Because yes. the homesteader had done it. So you all, only used the, the plows for breaking the land? Yeah. Dirking, yeah. Okay, and then you use those discs? Uh, so Just to keep, to work the weeds under okay. and turn the soil over. And then you just work the land with the disc and then uh, sowed straight into the, to the field? Yeah, and then that's when the land started to blow. Yeah. The winds would come up and there would be so many of these Russian thistle. Yeah. It's a weed that grows in a big ball. Oh, yeah. And when it ripens, it comes loose and the mm. wind blows them up against fences. Oh, yeah. And then the wind would blow and the sand or the dirt would gather up against these weeds and yeah. fill the ditches with soil. That's when they started changing their practices of farming. At what time was that? Oh, I can remember sandstorms we called them, but they weren't sand. It was just topsoil. Yeah. When are you born? 35, I would say about 40 something. I could remember. Yes. What storms like that. But uh, I suppose the, the Dust Bowl were both when you were born and a bit earlier. No, after. It was after, yeah. Yeah, well, it was through the hungry 30s, they called it. Yeah. Late 30s, still in the 40s, it was just blowing. Yeah. When they changed working in the land, how did they do it uh, outwards? Well, somebody in Noble Ford invented a, a thing that went under the weeds but didn't turn it. No. It just cut it and loosened it, but didn't, it left all the stuff on the top. And the name of that tool was? That was it? They called the noble blade. Blades? How long were these blades? Oh, I think it was like a V-shaped V wing. Yeah. Oh, four feet each way, and there would be three of them in a row. Okay, there were four feet will be? Four feet, maybe five. Okay. And they were formed in a wing shape. Yes. V shape. Yes. Five feet would be one and a half meter about. Yeah. Because I've seen machinery they're using nowadays. They're also wings, but they are just like maybe 50 centimeters wide. Well, yeah, they, that does it. That now does the same thing. It cuts the weeds, it puts in fertilizer, and it also seeds. At the same time, yeah. Yeah, because they'll have a tube going in yeah. with the fertilizer first, yeah. then a seed drops in from yeah. another place mm. on top of the fertilizer, and then that blade sort of just covers it over. Okay, so then you can do all the yeah. work in the spring in one operation. Yeah. But back in the old days, when you used the, the blades or the... the Disc. Discs, yeah, and then you put in the seed. Did you do anything after putting in the seeds? Did you roll? No, they would they would go with the the disc and plow it all up. Yeah. Then they would have another machine with seed. Yes. And it was a big box with seed with things going down yeah. that would yeah. go into the ground. Then mm. you would use that. Yeah. And that was it. Then you relied on the weather and the rain to bring it up. Okay, because back home in Norway, we'd, after seeding, we would use a heavy roll. For Originally, it might have been a log, but now there are maybe rings yeah, of heavy yeah, metal yeah. that you run off, run over the fields after seeding to 
press the dirt together oh, yeah. and give better conditions for the roots. And what about uh, spraying the fields? They did nothing then. No, that's quite. When that start... came quite a few years after. Okay. That they started putting things in to kill the weeds. Mm. That would be our day of farming. Yes. Yeah. How was your grandmother? What kind of person was Ida? Your gr yes, your grandmother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of person was she? Personality? Very tolerant too. Yeah. I didn't hear much about her as, I don't know, she, we never ever had, she had very long hair, I remember. She always wore it in a braid and wrapped it around her head. And we would go, if we stayed there or any time, we'd, the four girls, and they were babysitting or whatever they called it, we would fight to comb her long hair. It went oh, down yeah. to her waist. Hmm. She was a very tiny woman, and she made a, she walked, it was pretty well, uh, more than three quarters of a mile at lunchtime to go to see her daughter. And then she would walk home. She would take maybe a couple of eggs or some coffee or whatever to her daughter, who was, they only had a quarter of land and... To Myrtle? Mm-hmm. Yes. And probably didn't have as much money. No. And then she would have coffee or a drink and visit and then come home. And she did this all her life. Oh. Every day. Okay. Because, yeah. Um... I was going to say, uh, did uh, you have any contact with Ida's family? They weren't very, we, we've had them come quite, oh, maybe two or three times, once or twice a year. Oh, yeah. But there was not much, there was no real family ties, really. They didn't, they seemed more like visitors, not family. Okay. Where did they come from? How far away? Claire's home. Where is that? Which is west, about uh, 40 miles, mm. on the main highway south of Calgary. Mm. And that's where Ida first went when they came from the States. Okay, so Ivor met Ida in Alberta. We don't know that. Okay. Mm. Because the first child was born, he was three or four years old when they got married. Mm. So we have no idea whether that's Ivor's child or if Ida had one before and then married Ivor. Oh. That was Fred. And oh. if you look at the dates, he was, I, he was older. He was born in already three or four. Yes. Okay. And Fred is the one who, who died, mm -hmm. the oldest one. Mm -hmm. uh, what, um, what did your parents do when the kids grew up and they got, got older? How long did they keep on running the farm? Oh, gee. Um, I was in high school yet. Floyd had moved out. He, was, he took up carpentry and he was building things. He moved to Carmengay. And then Harry came home from the war and he stayed on the farm and farmed with Elmer. Lloyd had gotten married, so he moved away to his own land. Mm -hmm. So it was just mostly in their 20s, late 20s, that the, the two left. Elmer and Harry were there. Harry finally moved to Auntie Myrtle's to help. He was a hired man for... Auntie Myrtle's husband, second okay. husband. Mm. And that's how come she <coughs> married Edgar because yeah. Harry was working for him and they didn't have a cook. And Harry said, I have a sister who would c come and cook. Oh, so yeah. she came and house kept and cooked and then ended up marrying Edgar. Yes, he was a nice man. <laughs> but, but how long did your grandfather run the farm? Until when? Oh, Grandma d passed away already. Oh, yeah. And he still, he didn't really do much anymore. He just lived there. Yes. The, boy, the two boys that were left did the farming. Oh, yeah. And then 
Elmer was left alone on the farm and he died on the farm. He had a massive heart attack in the shop. Okay, and was that the one who Elmer. had been in World War II? No, that oh. Elmer. Okay, yes. And uh, what, when did um, Ivor move to Carmongay? It would be before Elmer passed away because, yeah, after Grandma died, I think he p probably moved to Carmen Gay. Okay, so he was living there alone. Yeah, well, the boys were in the bunkhouse. Yes, but uh, in Carmen Gay, when he moved to Carmen. Yeah, he lived alone. Yeah. Okay. For many years? Quite a few years, and then when it got to the point where he was ill or not ill but couldn't get around that well and that they he went to a home in Vulcan. Okay what did he do these years when he was living alone in Carmongay? Nothing. Okay. Gardened, had a garden. Yeah. Visited with people that he knew almost to the people in town. So he was social? Oh yeah if he was in a spot he was very social yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, could you just say the names and when they were born, your brothers and sisters, a little bit about what they did and maybe personality or some memories? Of which? Your, your so brothers and sisters. No, no, wrong. Uncles, <laughs> your, and, an, <laughs> uncles and aunts? Yes, that's what I'm thinking about. Well... Start with the oldest one and go downwards. So. Auntie Agnes, we didn't see much because she moved very far away. How far? Way to Nor Edmonton, which is very far. And she didn't get any kids? She didn't have kids. Apparently couldn't have them. They don't know why. Okay. She married a neighbor's son. Yeah. And um, we vi they visited. They For a while they did live on the farm on 80 acres that my dad got. Yes. But then they went out to, to get work mm -hmm. and they moved up by Edmonton. The next one would be dad. He was very patient. Our discipline came from my mother, not him. Mm. He was he worked the farm and then he got a job maintaining the rural phone lines. Okay. For years, for 20, 30 years he worked there. Mm. So he had a supplement of that for money. Mm. And then he went to the coal mines one we went for one year in BC because he was hailed out for seven years straight in a row. <laughs> he lost the crop? Yeah. Totally? Totally. And oh. there was no insurance or anything at that oh. time. So his, my mom's mother lived in BC and they, hit, her husband was a miner. So we went there and he mined for a year and then we moved back home. Okay. And then the next one would be Harry, who I didn't know that well before he went to the war. No. And when he came back, he was not a very pleasant person. He was very... The memories of the war came up, up all the time, and then he started drinking, and then he would get worse. He... So I don't know what kind of a person he was before at all. No. But all these years after the war, uh, I was in, when I was visiting, I asked your, your dad to see the, the homestead and see Harry. And mm -hmm. your father, yeah, he wasn't very fired up about it, but then I said, okay, okay, we can go early tomorrow before he starts drinking. Yeah. And then we went out to a farm. Um, I guess he was fairly sober and he was in a very good mood at that time. And uh, I talked with him and I uh, looked around and the house, a shed or something right next to the <coughs> yeah. to the house was just packed with empty cases of whiskey mm -hmm. bottles. Yeah. It was enormous amou amounts. Yeah. And in the later years, Lloyd would buy the booze for him because he went to, he drove the school bus. So he got into Picture Butte where there was a place to buy. Okay, so f uh, yeah, the one on the farm that was uh, Harry. Harry, he didn't have an, a car or anything. No, he stayed on the farm. He uh, <coughs> until he started working for my auntie's 
husband. <coughs> so Harry worked there also. Harry worked for uh, Auntie Myrtle's. Yes. Okay. Husband. Yeah. <coughs> Edgar. Want, yes. Do you want some water? Oh. <coughs> no, I think I'll be okay. Okay. <coughs> but he would have flashbacks of the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember him coming home for holidays and he visited us in BC. Oh yeah. And he got the flu or a cold or something and he had very high fever. And my mum nursed him back to health, but when he <coughs> he would get uh no oh, I how do they call what do they call it? Uh post stress syndrome. Things he would remember yes. like and he would scream out stuff and he would scream out one thing he, I remember mum saying, he was screaming, get out, get out. And apparently one of the, his crew or his friends were in a, went to an outhouse. Oh. But it was booby trapped. Ooh. And so he seen friends get killed and, and he was a gunner <coughs> that operated those gun, big guns. Yeah, cannons. Yeah. Yeah. Type on, thing. Yeah, not the tank, but. Uh, no, it stood on a, the a ground. Artillery. Yeah, and then they would load bombs in it and blow yes. the bombs off. So he fought in Germany. He was in Italy, Germany, all those countries really. He okay. mo they moved around. Yes. And we never heard much about that either. No. So did he have contact with yes with your Aunt Myrtle and then Lloyd, but. He didn't visit much with other people. He was mostly alone then. Yeah. 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 What about the next one in the row? The next one would be Floyd, who was very funny, very... Um, he liked to joke. Mm. And that's when you found out that when you went to the garden and seen him, and he said, no, I'm not a Renning. And then when he realized you weren't just a salesman or something, he said, I'm a Renning. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm kind of confused. That was Floyd. Or Lloyd? Floyd? Floyd was the tall, lanky one. Well, Lloyd was tall too, but later years he got very big. Okay, so the one living in the And Carmagee in the house was Floyd. Yes. Yeah. Um, he also was in, he was in service, but he only got as far as Halifax. And then the war was getting close to the end, so he didn't go overseas. And well, Elmer also was in shipped yeah. out but he didn't go anywhere either what did floyd do he he was a self-made carpenter yes and see now was is floyd the father of the three women yesterday no that uh, was lloyd okay so floyd was a carpenter yeah and he stayed a bachelor he stayed a bachelor yeah yeah and uh, harry we th thought he was a bad we figured he was a bachelor but i can remember in pictures that he sent from the war, and there was a picture of him and a woman that was taken at a studio. But we never heard of any woman, and I don't know what happened to the picture. I have no proof. <laughs> okay, that would have been a picture from Halifax. No, it would have been overseas. Oh, Harry. Harry would have been yes, in Germany, yes. Holland, yes, one yes. of those places. Yes. But, uh, so we don't know if there was a a woman in his life then mm. or and she wouldn't come to Canada or what it's no. just mm. speculation mm. and <clears throat> then the next one would be Elmer and he had a girlfriend and they had a little son and the son lives in Lethbridge right now but he has got in touch with our family but his wife does not want to okay so but he knows of our existence and we know of his existence. What did Elmer do for a living? He farmed, basically, that was it. Okay, so your father's land. Yeah. But that would, uh, just a part of it, wouldn't that be a fairly small farm in this area? Well, Elmer actually farmed Grandpa's land. All of it? Or... All of it, yeah. Okay. Because Myrtle didn't farm it, she let them boys farm it. Okay. See, when Myrtle didn't own it until Grandpa made up his will. No. Then he had enough land to give every kid living yeah. 80 acres. Yes. Oh, and yeah. he made his will. Yeah. 
every kid got 80 acres. Yeah. So the quarter or the 80 acres that Myrtle got was up by the house. Yeah. And then <clears throat> dad's joined dad's land. So he said, and it was pasture and partly broken. He didn't make, he said to dad, no use waiting till I die. You might as well use your 80 acres now and get it going. So dad got the 80 acres quite soon, oh, yeah. but the other ones, Myrtle didn't farm her land till after the will was read. Okay, so Elmer was... He farmed all that. He would be uh, one section. One sec the whole section, yeah? Yeah. Until he retired. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Elmer died. Elmer died? On the farm. Okay. Oh, a what? Or? Heart, massive heart attack. At what age? About 50 something, 54, I believe oh, it was. Or my something. age. Yeah. Yeah, that was dangerous earlier. Heart attacks yeah. clogged yeah. arteries. The next one is. After Elmer is Lloyd. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a set of twins. Yes. Born in between Elmer yeah. and Lloyd. And they died at birth. They were only about three days old. Yes. And it was in the winter time, and they, in those days, you couldn't get anybody to come and bury them or anything. So they put wrapped them up and put them in the granary and froze them yeah. till spring, yeah. so that they could bury them in Bobo's yeah. cemetery. Yeah, I noticed that died the same day, three days old. They were born more weak than for too early, maybe. I don't know. No. Nobody knows. Grandma never talked about that either, so no. <clears throat> we don't know. So then... Then Elmer was born, and uh, he stayed on the land the, the longest, Elmer. Yes. So, so... Yeah, he was the one... That died on that land. Farming there, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, then you said... Then you had... The, the one next in row is then... Pardon? The one next in row. Was Lloyd came. Yes. Lloyd was the youngest. Okay. And what did uh, he do? do? He, he farmed his his wife's parents bought the land north were of Grandpa's. Yeah. And uh, gave it to them, and he they farmed that. Plus, he drove school bus for forty some years, mm -hmm. and that was his extra income. Yeah. And they had six kids. Two of them were born on the farm. In those days, you sh weren't supposed to be born on the farm, but oh. <clears throat> his wife did not like doctors. Uh -huh. And my mom was a nurse's aide. Yes. And yes. so they would call on her, and she delivered two of them. And then she said she couldn't do any more. It was illegal. And <laughs> illegal, even? Yeah, it, you, you could not be born on, like... If you had to be born there, yeah, but yeah. she did not have to be. The ba babies could have been born in a hospital, but she wouldn't go. Hmm. I think you you didn't mention Myrtle. Oh, I forgot about Myrtle. She's yeah. somewhere in between. There, she was my second mother. Yes. Uh, uh, if mom and dad weren't home, the first thing we did after school would be go up to Myrtle's. If yeah. they weren't in town with them. Yeah. And... Our four girls, which are up here in a picture, yes, were inseparable. Yeah, we did everything together. Hmm. I met her, and I I spent you no know, back in '83. I was staying with your father and mother, and what Myrtle and Larson was there quite a bit, and they were very nice people. She was a very pleasant woman. Yeah, yeah. Her first husband died. A week before we, I got married. Oh, yeah. He was in the hospital, and they called it hardening of the arteries, but I think it was high blood pressure or something like mm. that. Mm. And he was in his fifties. Yeah. And um, she was a very good-natured person too. Yes. We would go there and sleep there. No questions asked if mum was and dad were somewhere and when. And if it was got late, we would stay there. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, where did you go to school? We went to school 
I started school in Bar Hill, it was called. It's only two, three, four miles actually from home. That would be in 42? I started in 42, yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> I went there right through. I went to school all there except one year when we moved to BC when dad was mining. Mm. And I was in grade five. Mm. I went to school there for a year in there and then came back. And I graduated in, in that same school that I started in. Is that 12th grade? I went 13. Okay. I split my 12 into two because I love school. Yeah. And I couldn't see leaving it, so I split my subjects up so I could take some in grade 12 and some in grade 13. Okay. Yes, uh, I was thinking about that, that you are ob obviously a very gifted woman. And uh, I've seen your nice Thank work, you. <laughs> yes, and all, all your knowledge. Did you have any opportunity to getting more education? No, I started seeing Victor and we got married. Okay. <laughs> so that was that. Right after. Uh, right grade. after high school. Yes. Well, I met him while I was in high school. Yes. And then we got married, and then he had to take go with his job, which moved to. BC. Yeah. So I left home right after school. He was quite a few years older than you at that time. So he's still, but at that time. It... He's five years older. Oh, just five years. Yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of, kind of usual. I did not like the young ones, <laughs> the young kids in school. I never ever. To try this. To me, they were big brothers. They were not. No. You know, boyfriends. Yeah, but if you like you or your, so you no. Know, you, how many kids are you? Oscar had how many kids? He had four. Four, yes. And uh, but if in those days, if you wanted to take a higher education, would you have any opportunity? Oh yeah, my yeah. sister went to uh, um, business school after yeah. high school in Lethbridge. For a long time? No, I don't know. In those days, business was maybe a year. And yeah. then you could go work as a secretary, answer the phone, and stuff like that. Okay. But yeah. you could go, to go to a university or college, you had to go out of town. Yes. Because we didn't have the college or the university. Yeah. But then would the family uh, would have to support you, you had to work. Oh, for, yeah. Work, work your way through. I think Diana was just supported by the family. She yeah. had a room, and or she stayed in Lethbridge. Yeah. And they paid a rent on a room and she went to school for a year and then she was on her own. Hmm. And like my father and brothers and sister, so they were very gifted, but back in those days they didn't have much chance for education. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it was basically the same with us because you had to go out of the country, maybe to Edmonton, Calgary. Hmm would be the closest that you could go to go some school or some other thing. Yes. Um, yes, you mentioned that Osbjorn was your first visitor. Did Arne Urvalden come before or after me? Arne came after you. Okay. What kind of impression did I make? <laughs> Pardon? What kind of impression did I make when I suddenly popped up? I didn't see you. I didn't know. I just heard them talking about you had come and you yeah. went to Carmen Gay and then you were going to go across. You were hitchhiking and yeah. that's all I ever heard. But I met you. No, you never did. No, because you were not living here. No, I lived no. in BC. We moved to the farm after dad or mom. No, mom and dad retired. Dad wanted to retire and quit farming, and we didn't move there. We bought the land in 76, but we didn't move there until 79. Yes, but this is 83. You were there. But I, we could not have been home, because I do not remember you no, there. I'm sure I, you were living next door, and I'm, I, I remember that I'm, I'm at Wick. At, uh, I don't remember you exactly, but I remember... I don't remember your face, but I remember that you were there, and I remember Shirley Wick, and then... Uh... I cannot remember <laughs> that at all, but I do remember them talking and wondering where this kid went that was hitchhiking. <laughs> yeah, 
No, I didn't get in touch again, so that was quite unpolite of me. That because your mother and father was, was very, very nice to me, and your father was very... He was a very pleasant person, and he, he reminded me of my um, Uncle Oscar in, in Norway. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, that, those were, I didn't stay very many days, but that was very memorable. Very yeah, good yeah. Experience. I'm very happy that I, I went, so I got to see that generation. Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. Is there anything else you would have, you have some memories you would like to talk about no. outside the school and the farm and uh, no? What did you do? Yes, you mostly went over and played with Myrtle's girls, so you had uh, that was friends all right by. Uh, our uh, Lloyd's ch kids lived only a little ways up on the hill from Grandpa, yeah. but they were so much younger. Yes. And I was in high school by the time they were getting up in age. Mm. So we did not have that close connection to them. No. Uh, where did your father go to school? He went to school at that Andersonville, just north of our farm and a little east. How far away would that be? For him, it would have, they had to either ride a horse or walk. It would be, if they cut across country, maybe two, three miles. Yeah. Did you go to church as ch ch children? No, we did not. Ivers, I remember uh, people coming to the door and wanting to, you know, talk about religion. Oh, yeah. And Grandpa, I remember him saying, I have a Bible, I can read it, and I'll interpret it the way I yeah. want. Yes, because I've gotten the impression that the church is not very important in Canada. No, it isn't. And it's very different from you know, the Scandinavian settlements in the Midwest, in Minnesota and Dakotas. They were church going, they were religious, they're the most conservative people yeah. in the US, just about. They had a big Bible, and Grandma did read it, and Grandpa did read it too, but yeah. we were not pushed into a, a, a religion. No. And there wasn't much choice in our area. There was only one, and it was Pentecostal, which was not... British? It was oh. a Pentecostal yeah. church, yeah. Is that the kind of British church? I don't know what... what. It was the only community church. It was up by Beauville. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned that your father got hailed out seven times that his crop was destroyed by hail, mm -hmm. hugger. How is a hailstorm? It's uh, it, ice pellets come down. Yeah. A little, they can range from big, big, big hunks of ice, round. You show me how big? Could be that big. There has been reports of golf ball size hail right yeah. to just tiny little hail. Yes. And if you, it will kill chickens if it's big enough. It mm. comes down with such force that it will hit them and kill them, or animals, but it, it will wipe out a field. It flattens it right out. At what time of the summer would it come? It could be a nice day, and then all of a sudden the clouds would build, and the wind would come up, and it would hail. And I... it hails in strips. Oh, yeah. It would not hail all over the country. No. It would pick a piece of land and mm. go down maybe a mile wide and go for seven miles or so or more or less. Okay. And uh, but what time, any time of the summer? Could be spring to fall. Okay. You could have a car crop just seeded, but mostly it was when the crop was just up, at, was close to harvest. Okay. And then the hail would come and you would not get your crop. It was impossible to yeah. get, get it, pick it up. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever get caught in a hailstorm? A which? Did you ever get caught in a hailstorm when you were out no, no. walking or something? Because you learn to read the sky. You yeah. you seen certain clouds and you know it was going to hail. Hmm. But it could be really you no know, uh, painful, I guess, if somebody got hit in a caught yeah. in a hailstorm. Oh, yeah, you can get bruises and everything if you were out in a storm. We never ever had big hail like they get now. No. Our hail was mostly little stuff. Yeah. But it comes down very hard. Yeah. And it can't I it 
can kill chickens. Mm -hmm. I remember having to pick up chickens that had been hit. Yes. Uh, now you mentioned like your father lost his crop seven years in a row without insurance. And it must have been a tough life out there and that a lot of people were kind of fairly poor maybe? Oh yes, we did not have lots. No. Christmases we get a bag of candy, little bag of candy, hmm. an orange, hmm. and mum would hang a string somewhere and put it on for Christmas morning. We didn't have Christmas trees because there was no such thing. No. Uh, we had Christmas concerts and the the schools would give each kid a bag of goodies. Yeah. But I was quite old already before I got a real Christmas present. Hmm. And that was from my mother's sister who bought me, she brought me and my sister a stuffed animal. Yeah. And that was, it was very poor. We, my mother, had to work very hard to get us. She wanted us dressed well. We always had good clothes. Mm. We were always dressed nice. She bought us, you know, for special. When we started school, we got new clothes mm. and at Christmas. Yes. But you did not get any special things. No. Uh, yeah, we have, not, we have not spoken about your mother. She was also a very nice woman, but she seemed to be a bit quiet. Or, or maybe my father was. <laughs> well, she she was already in the process of having Alzheimer's. Okay. Because she they we she had diabetes yeah. and she neglected her diabetes. Okay. She did not want to not eat this and not eat that, and yeah. so it affected her health, and she soon was in a hospital. Yeah. What was her her background, ethnic Alan? She, her, she grew up with only a mother for years. Yeah. Um, that's a picture of her there. In the middle. Four. Her dad died when he was 30 some years old. Yes. With, from the flu. The one in the middle. The tall, taller girl is her. In 19, she was born 1913. And that's my Auntie Anne on the man's lap, and she was born 1915. He died in 1918 when the flu went across the world, or okay. Canada. Yeah, the Spanish flu. And so that grandma, mm. who raised three daughters with no husband for years, and then she remarried. Okay, and then lived where? In Colerst. Is that close? That's where uh, we went yesterday. That okay. was Colerst, but further up was the town. Yeah. And there was a mine there, and he worked in the coal mine. Hmm. Okay, I think um, we have done a very good interview for more than one hour. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness. <laughs> is there something more you'd like to say to... Oh, I'm just in? glad that this is all coming out. I, I wish it would have come out sooner that we had all this information about relatives and family and Norway and all this because mm. we when we were younger may have gone there but yeah. now it's too late for us. No. Well your father went there, a mother. They only went because Diane and Asbjorn were going. Yes. And they asked us to go too, but Vic was working in at BC. Couldn't get we got mm. a week off to help to come to the farm and stay there when mom and dad went, but mm. we could not have gotten away. They're supposed to have a good time in Norway. With they Oscar. enjoyed it very much. Yes. Because dad was not a traveler. No, no. That was his first time on a plane, probably on a everything first time. Yeah. Uh, I also met your sister Diane, and she was a very pleasant, very beautiful woman. That. Uh, I met in '83. Mm -hmm. She was going with Ospion at that time. Yeah. But she was maybe ill already at that time. No, she was having headaches, but yeah. she was not classed as ill. She would just get these headaches, but they started about that time. Hmm. And I don't know why somebody didn't, why she didn't know what was going on, but maybe it was not in, curable anyway. Who yes. knows? Yes. Yes. Her, my mother's youngest sister passed mm. away with the same thing. Okay. Mm. Aneurysm. 
Yeah. And Diane was 48, and my mom's sister was 42 when they yes. both yes. passed away. But you got a lot of, got of Norwegian contact then through Osbjorn. He was staying here for many years. And yeah, he came and then Diane was divorced, had left the husband, and she was living on our farm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When she had to, she wanted to leave BC and we owned the land. We said, well, if you can get your trailer there, you can set it up on the farm. We're not coming for a few years. Oh, yeah. So she lived there for a couple of years till we moved there. In the trailer you lived in later? No. no. She had her own trailer on the other hill. Okay. And then Closer to Ever? Pardon? The other hill closer to Ever? Yeah. yeah. Um, Ever? We were... The, our trailer was uh, south of the house, of oh, yeah. my dad's. Yeah. They were on the other hill. Okay, north of your <clears> dad's <throat> house. Yeah. Okay, and then she took her trailer to town afterwards? Yes. The, I think they sold it and bought a house. Then. Yes, they did. Yes. Yeah. I hope to get this, hope this has worked. <laughs> yeah. And I hope to then get it to a DVD. And then I'm going to try to send it to you. Okay. I don't know how to do this. I just... Oh, you're practicing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm a good carpenter and stuff, but this electronic stuff I don't know how to use. Yeah. So okay. then I guess we just quit and I just uh, just give you a hug. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very camera. good, yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you for the interview. And now I'm going back to Norway. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> Did you ever get our, our name and address? Uh, I'm not sure. I, uh... Oh, I know what I got here. Okay. I'll get that. Thank you gave that horn to her and she blew and got dust or flour all over and she was so mad at him for days and days because of this <laughs> yes because he also asked me to blow in this bavarian hunting horn or whatever it was yeah yeah and i did as strong i blew as strong as i could and i got flour all over my face and everybody was laughing and i i was a bad sport i got a bit yeah. Sour, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she got very. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So it seemed to be your father seemed to be very, very playful. Yeah. And then he gave me the horn as a compensation, I guess. Oh, I see. Yeah. They, it was Floyd used it quite a bit. <laughs> Floyd brought it to the farm. Yeah, to have fun with people, but to have fun. Yeah. Okay. Family later that they wouldn't hitch, the family to Myrtle. Okay. That's why I did it like I did. But if I now do a page, like you say, a family tree, then they will realize that those are the kids. Yes, and, and the kids. family tree, then in front of each of the yeah. brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. uncle yeah. and aunts. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will. I'm going to do that because it'll make it clear for people that don't like our own family will realize that they're connected, but. Like for Norway, it's not that great. Is the family spending much time together? We do not have much time with Lloyd's family. Those three girls there. Oh yeah, yes. They, there's three brother, two brothers left. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're not close to them because we, we were leaving home when they were just getting yes. into teens. So. Yes. And then I got married and moved and all, it, so we have not had the connection, but we're, I, when we decided to have this the other night, I said, I'm going to phone them and mm. see if they're interested. And if they are, then they can come. If not, we don't know what they thought anymore. Yes. And uh, they were all very anxious. So. Yes. They were very good entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they all have big, fa uh, Patsy has seven six kids mm. Marilyn has four Donna has two mm. one daughter was yeah. there mm. and then there's a boy who has three another boy has one and one boy died okay but uh, <coughs> Debbie and the sisters you are closer to uh, that's Vivian's family yes, uh, and we are very close because Vivian and I grew up together yes. so it their kids are closer to me. Yeah, they were all very nice girls. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. Who are you up high? The first one. The first from here. Yeah. So uh, two, two, two yeah. or three, and the then one... you have one there and one there. Yeah. 
And who is what? That's Ivor, what, there was the will. Mm -hmm. uh, that was correct. I think that's the what third I mean. one from the end. Yeah. Could you yeah. tell what, once that's more what correct. you saw?